Hello, Grove Senior Class. My name is Jeff Clune, and over 20 years ago, I was sitting in the same exact seats you were, metaphorically speaking, uh, which is to say that I was a senior heading out into the world. Uh, I want to thank you for the invitation to come speak with you, and I've been thinking a lot about what I want to say to you, and I've decided to give you the advice that I wish I could give to myself sitting in your shoes, which is to say, what do I know now that I wish I had known then? I have six things that I want to tell you. The first one is that you need to take charge of your life. So most of your life, things have been decided for you, where you're going to live, what classes you're going to attend. You've had some freedom, but not a lot. In college, if you go to college, you'll have a lot more. And afterwards, you'll have a tremendous amount of opportunities in front of you. Now, of course, you will be in charge of your life no matter what. You'll be making decisions. But I would argue that most people never fully take the reins of their own life. That uh, by far, most people just kind of take the easy choices that present themselves in front of them, and they go with the easy path. Instead, I think that you should be very intentional about the way that you live and decide the things that you want to accomplish in life and the things that you want to do and go out and uh, do those things. And don't just kind of go with what's in front of you, but think very much about the space of possibilities and what you might do. The world will let you make lazy decisions. It will let you make bad decisions. And right now, you're probably mostly interested in what you can get away with. But ultimately, you want to not worry about what you can get away with, but what decisions will lead to your best long-term happiness. The second thing that I would uh, challenge you to do is to find what you are passionate about in life. This is probably the most important thing for you to do. Now, most graduation speeches will tell you to follow your passion, and I believe in that. But what they don't tell you is that it's hard to identify your passion. How do you discover what it is that will make you happy? So I think that you have to be very intentional and very active in the process of trying to find and discover what it is that you love to do. What's your calling? So you, the life will not put that in front of you and label it. You've got to go find it. It's a quest. Uh, in the sense of something that's long and hard and will have many twists and turns, but ultimately is tremendously rewarding if you succeed. So, you have to go out and sample from the menu of life. If you go to university, take many courses in different areas. If you're considering 10 different career options, do your best to sample all 10 or to talk to the people who live and do those careers and get as much information as you can to find out what it is that uh, you will do or like to do. So I would say that this is your job during your 20s and your 30s and maybe beyond is to find what you're passionate about, what you love doing, and then so that you can go do it. Now, how will you know if you're passionate about something? Well, I think that you want to keep doing it. You want to learn more, read more, do more. You want to tell your friends. You want to tell your family. You find yourself having to apologize because you keep talking about it. And you can't stop talking about it. That's when you know you're onto something. But also there are other signs and it's on you to look for them because the world will not label your passion and say here it is, this is what you love to do, you've got to find it. That means that you're going to have to be on the lookout. There will be clues along the way and you have to know to pay attention to them. So if you do something, brush up against an activity or a subject or a course or a conversation and you get really excited and you really like that, don't just go back to what you were doing before. Stop and say, hey, is there a way that I could do more of that? Is there a way that I could learn more or make that my career? That's what you want to be on the lookout for. In hindsight, once you find your passion, you'll probably discover that all along there are all these pointers. If only you had paid attention to the clues more carefully. So I'm giving you a heads up now to be on the lookout for those things. Now, once you think that you have things that you're passionate about, make sure to check whether or not the daily life lines up with your idea. So go do an internship or talk to people who do that work to make sure that the daily life is as interesting as the subject is from afar, because sometimes that's not true. I also think that you want to be daring, this is the third thing, uh, be daring but informed, which means that be big and go big and go after things that are interesting to you, even if the odds of succeeding are not 
tremendously high, but also be realistic. You know, maybe calculate the likelihood of achieving that goal. And also think about what happens if you don't achieve it. Is your fallback plan okay? Are you willing to change course afterwards? But don't be afraid to fail. That is absolutely not a reason not to go after something that you might love and be passionate about. You'll get many chances at life, and every single successful person has to fail many, many times before they become successful. Like when starting a new sport, you're going to be bad at the beginning and you learn by doing and you get better at it with each time. So every single person who's a successful music singer or actor or entrepreneur or athlete, they started off bad and they got better over time, even if they want you to think that that's not true and it doesn't seem to be true from the outside. So fail often, embrace failure and ask yourself this, would you rather fail after trying and giving it your all? Or would you rather spend the rest of your life wondering what would have happened if I had actually gone after the thing that I was really passionate about? So the next step is once you found something that you're passionate about, go for it. Go get it. Don't stay in your cozy nest and be afraid to go after the thing that you want to do. Even if your job is safe and it's a little risky and uncertain and you're, you, know, you're, you think you've got a mortgage and you've got kids and you don't want to take a risk, uh, you know, go for it. You know, you're going to be happier doing things that you love and you're passionate about. So Mark Twain actually said this much better than I ever could. So I'll read a quote from him that was actually given to me when I was a senior at Groves on my senior night in a handout. Uh, and it, what, the, the quote is, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So throw off the bowlines, sail away from safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Now, that's not to say that it's all going to be romantic and fun. So part of going for it and going and getting it is that you have to throw yourself at it full time. Don't just dabble from safe harbor. Really cut, cut free the bowlines and really set sail. That means going full time and working really, really, really hard. It's not going to be all glamorous. It's not going to be all fun. Every single person who's successful has put in long, long hours practicing their craft and getting better and learning and feeling ignorant and stupid and untalented because that's what it takes to get good and get talented and get smart. So uh, put in hard work, set high standards for yourselves, and do not let obstacles deter you. And it's going to be hard, but every successful person who has gotten there has overcome, has endured, has persisted, and at times has not taken no for an answer even when people tried to block them from their ultimate passion. So you have to be a little stubborn too. Uh, also, the next thing I would say is, number five, is change course if necessary. You've got a lot of time, life is long, and things might not work out, or you might discover you're not truly passionate about something. That doesn't mean that there's not something else to be passionate about. So keep on the lookout for when you need to change course. Do not get ossified and settled into one particular rut and spend so much time saying, you know, uh, this, you know, I'll do something else someday, or after I just do this for the next couple of years, then I'll go do the thing that I really want and passionate about. Uh, life's too short for that. Go after it. So. Uh, think long term. If you want to go travel the world, that's fine. Your career can wait. If you want to go skiing for a season because that's something that you've always wanted to do, that's fine. Go do it. As long as the short term consequences aren't that hard, the long term will figure itself out. But also, think long term. Invest in yourself and your own education and go after these long term uh, goals as opposed to settling for the short term coziness. Uh, the final thing is that you should always ask when you don't know something. Many people think that asking questions that appear stupid is a sign of weakness and they don't want to do them. I actually think in contrast that asking questions and revealing that you don't know something is a sign of strength and confidence and self-improvement. And I look for those people and I try to hire them and befriend them and I respect them more. And that is because it is much more important to become talented and smart than to appear talented and smart. So don't worry about what you look like today, worry, look, worry about how good you can get if you Always ask the questions that make you better and make you smarter and make you more talented. The final thing I'll say is that you want to find teachers for the rest of your life. I had the fortune at Groves of having very excellent teachers that motivated me and inspired me and taught me. And I want to take the time to thank them. Uh, specifically, that's John Lawson, Susan Mundy, Barbara Shaheen, Marla Faluka, and many others. But I also want to say that once you're 
uh, outside of university life, teachers and good ones will not fall in front of you on the path and take an interest in you. You've got to seek out people that will give you good feedback and tell you how to get better and constantly help you learn and grow. And when people take the time to give you criticism, even though it hurts and it's hard to hear, thank them for it and then dwell on why they are saying that and how can you get better as a result. Because the easiest thing in the world is to smile and tell somebody a good job. And the hardest thing to do is tell people that you love that there's something that they could get better at. So when people do that for you, be on the lookout and thank, thank them for that and try to use that to improve yourself. So that's it. To recap, take charge of your own life. Grab the reins and get in the driver's seat, whatever metaphor you prefer. Identify your own passion. That's not easy. I think that's your job for the next decade or two. And you know, be daring but informed about going after your passion. But once you identify it and you think it's the right move, go whole hog. Go full time. Throw yourself at it and work at it as hard as you can. Change course if necessary and ask when you do not know and befriend those that will help you find information and improve yourself because you constantly want to do that. So thank you for listening and uh, to everybody who, in, who organized this event. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. I hope you've benefited from what I've said. And I think that as long as you constantly and intentionally choose where you want to end up and work very hard to get there, you will have an amazing, amazing interesting and fulfilling life. And I hope that you benefit from what I've shared, and I wish you all the best at creating the life you want for yourself. Thank you.